be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, click the bell icon to be notified when we upload new videos. Hi everyone, welcome to Harp Gathering 2021. My name is Lee Timer, and I'm here to facilitate a wonderful meet and greet for all of us today. I am very happy to be here. What a thrill to be able to come to see you in spite of everything that has happened to us in the past year, year and a half with the pandemic. Um, we're going to take a journey today and we're going to meet a very remarkable instrument. We're going to meet a double strung harp. The title of our time together is Double Up. It makes sense. Two sets of strings makes this a harp with benefits. It's, it's a really remarkable instrument that lost favor many generations ago. It was one of a stable of many types of alternative harp layouts that were important at the time that levers were not quite invented yet and we didn't really have any pedal harps. One of the things that a cross strung, a double strung, or a triple strung harp did for those of us who play back many years ago was it gave us a chance to have diatonic scales, to have more options for what we played and how we played. Then we had the invention and the creation and the fine tuning of beautiful concert harps with pedals and many of the double strung, triple strung, and cross strung harps fell out of favor because they weren't really necessary. They certainly did persevere. Some of them are very culturally significant. Um, like the Welch harp is often a triple strung harp. But the double strung harp in the United States just wasn't, a, it wasn't an item, it wasn't around. So before we take this journey together with a double strung harp, I wanna share a few things that are really important to know about the history of this particular type of harp. First of all, pre-1990, there was no such thing as a double-strung harp as we know it today. The double-strung harp was something that was read about and was known, but it just wasn't available. There was no such thing as putting your hands on one. So we owe a couple of people some deep gratitude for the creation and the bringing back and reincarnation of this particular instrument. So I'd like to give a huge shout out to Lori Riley and Liz Sifani, who in 1990 wanted to do something with a double strung harp. You would have to talk with Lori to find out exactly how she got so involved with a harp that had more than one course of strings and where the in interest really came from for her. But without Liz and without Lori, this harp that I'm looking at right now would not be here. It would not exist. They met and discussed and talked and brainstormed and said, we need to find a builder, someone who has harp skills, who can really engineer this harp. They approached builders and two of the wonderful harp builders that I know you're very aware of took the bait and were more than willing to give it a shot. One was triplet harps and the other was stony end harps. Now those harp makers were willing to sit down and do the hard work of engineering, designing, styling, and including all the special features that both Liz and Lori felt were part of this instrument. And the double strung harp became a real live instrument again. So I want to thank both Liz and Lori for that. Now about this harp and what we're going to do today. This happens to be a stony end double strung harp. Um, to be honest with you, I'd never had a harp before in my life until a double strung harp came into my world. I was looking for a harp. I had no idea what to do. I didn't know what to consider. I had no idea of how to educate myself. However, I want to shout out to Kelly Yousefian at the Michigan Harp Center who took me under her wing and said, come on over to the shop. Let's see what we have here. I have a feeling we can match you up with something that you're going to love. 
okay. We went on a very snowy winter night in Michigan, very snowy. <laughs> and we had the most wonderful evening and Kelly showed me every possible harp you can imagine. Harps I didn't know existed. And at the end of the evening, she said, you know, I'm thinking about you and the way that you play and I'm wondering if maybe there's a harp over here that you haven't tried yet that you might really like. Okay. I was so, whatever, I, I just want a harp. And she brought a harp just like this one. It was a stony end, double strung, cherry harp, 29 strings per course, with a full complement of Loveland sharpening levers. I looked at this thing and I thought, wow, what what is this? And she said, well, this is some of the newest and greatest. And she goes, and I don't mean new technology as far as this harp has been around for forever, but it's finally becoming an, a real valuable uh, commodity in the, in the harp community. And you should take a look at this because there's cool things you can do with this harp that you can't do on other harps. It's one of those well-kept secrets. When I say that this is a harp with benefits, I'm not kidding. This harp does indeed have the ability to do things that you just can't do on a single strung. And, and so I took this double strung harp home. I did not have access to a teacher. I was at least two hours away from Kelly's studio. It was the dead of winter. It was bad weather. It was just me and my harp, which is why I'm here today. I think that I can identify so deeply with what it feels like to start on a harp and possibly for you to start on a double strung. People say to me, oh, I don't know about that harp. It's got all those extra strings. That's just double the trouble, double the tuning, double the nightmare. My eyes can't fixate on what I'm supposed to look at. I don't know how you deal with it. And I'm here to say, balderdash, as my grandpa would say, absolute balderdash. This harp is so easy. This harp is so forgiving. This harp is so lovely. This harp is not double the trouble. This harp is double the joy and double the, the creativity, double the, imp the ability to improvise, to just have fun. Let me tell you what I know now that I've been playing a double strung harp for a while. When I play my single course harps, which I am very blessed to have, I have to stop and, and tell my hands to get along. My hands sometimes don't like each other very well. It's not just that the left hand doesn't want to work by itself and the right hand has to do something else. That kind of gets them mad at me sometimes. What they really get mad at is when I want to share the strings and I start moving my hands around the harp only to run in to my own hands. Here's the joy here. Here's the first benefit of this harp. You have real estate, private real estate, wonderful real estate for each hand. My right hand can do whatever it wants. Left hand doesn't care. It's not gonna run into each other. They're not gonna not play nice, actually they play better because they don't have to share. I have granddaughters under the age of five. I am here to tell you, sharing is a big deal. Even in our own physiology, we have to share. And this harp allows me to just get on with what it is I wanna do. So having this extra real estate for each hand, what a joy. Now, the other question I get is, well, this, this harp's intimidating. Uh, I don't even know how. I actually had a, a presenter a couple of years ago at a harp festival who is a fantastic harp player come up to me and the comment was, girlfriend, don't even, because he saw that I came into a workshop with a double strung harp. And he just looked at me like, <laughs> you know, where's your harp? And it's like, well, it's here. And then he started laughing and he said, oh, you know, I'm kidding. And I said, of course I know that. But he just looked at me like, why would you want to go there? Why double the trouble? Because it's not double trouble, it's double joy. So one of the other things you need to know is that I have 58 strings here at my command. 
58 strings. So I can play anything that I like. I can play this harp as a double. I can get in its location and... And I can echo. I'm playing in the same octave. Why does that matter? Because it impacts the sonority, the voice, the timbre of this instrument. It allows double the harmonics. It allows double the sympathetic vibrations. Why? Because each of these two courses of strings are tuned to the exact same pitch. I have a G and a G. I have a C and I have a C. I have an F and I have an F. And I have the ability to set these strings on fire because they will indeed sympathetically vibrate to their sister, brother, twin string on the other side. What does that do to the sound of this harp? It gives it a full voice, a rounder voice, a bigger voice than you would probably expect for a harp of this size. The other thing it eliminates, it creates some issues for the builder because there's more tension and more pressure and more design issues here. But usually, if you have a lot of notes and you want to play a, a big pieces of music, you need a lot of harp. You need some horizontal real estate. Because this string, this is a, a course of 29 strings, right? A concert harp is 40 strings, 47 strings, all right? You're going to go way out here. You're going to move way ahead of yourself. And let me tell you something. All of what I need is right here. I'm not having to reach all the way down to a 40th or a 47th string. Not only that, but um, I have to say that the voicing is so profound that I can play with some energy, but I don't have to put every piece of energy I have into the pull of my finger into my palm. I can pull gently and I'm gonna get a voice that sounds bigger that sounds more robust, but a little bit more round, a little bit more interesting. And the harmonics really do play well together on this harp. It's designed for that. Now, if you happen to be somebody like me, where you're a little on the short side, <laughs> or you have, I have relatively okay arms, a little bit short, but I have very small hands as a harp player, really. Um, this harp solves a lot of those problems ergonomically. It allows you to reach. Look at, I don't have to go to such extremes to get where I need to be. I can just reach. I can just reach. I don't have to worry about where my hand is going to go or that I'm going to run into each other. So with all of that said and knowing all of the things that we now know about how this harp vibrates, I want to show you something. I'm going to vibrate one of my harp strings here, just one and you can see it vibrating. What is harder for you to see today because of our, um, our format is that when I pluck that low G, this low G is absolutely on fire. It's vibrating. I can feel it with my finger even. It's vibrating. I can see it vibrating. I can feel it vibrating. So it gives us a huge amount of sustain on an instrument like this. is that going to sustain? It's still ringing. And of course, there are times when you want to dampen those strings and you have the option to do that. But it allows for such musicality when you can allow the harp to speak for itself. And I don't have to coax this harp to speak. It wants to sing. It wants to play. It wants to be part of the party. So the those particular issues really are a wonderful benefit to this harp. Now, I'm going to do a few things that some of you may have already seen. The things that I'm bringing to you today are not new under the sun when it comes to a double strung harp. They're more of a distillation or a, a, a tightening up of some of the more popular things that we can do with a double strung. 
And I want to make sure that you know that one of the things I'm going to provide for you today is a nice compendium, a collection of uh, harp builders who specialize and build double strung harps, uh, instructors in double strung, and also people who write music for double strung harp. You can play any piece of music on a double. I can treat this harp as what it is, a double strung harp, and change up any accompaniment, or like I love uh, fake books, because my left hand can just do what it wants, you know? I play guitar, so fake books make all the sense in the world to me. And my left hand can just have a, a really good time. Um, I, I really don't have to worry. So what are some of the neat things that we can do with this harp that really make it um, double the joy? I, I almost want to laugh because I'm old enough to know uh, a commercial that many people won't know. Double your pleasure, double your fun with double mint, double mint, double mint gum. Well, here's the double mint gum of the heart world. We have double the pleasure and double the fun here. One of those doubling things that we can do that are unique to this instrument is called echoing. And it's really quite self-explanatory. <laughs> did was play one note after the other side to side. I'm in the exact same octave. I've done nothing. Now I can take that same chord and I can quickly roll it one on top of the other. I can roll them together for an effect. If I get myself where I am. I can block them. I can separate them out, which comes back to the echo. But you can change, you can change the rhythm. Everything can be as rigid or as, as you want it to be. You can change the rhythm. You can syncopate your plucking into your hand and get something very unique. So echoing is one of those things that is a really wonderful thing to do on this instrument. The other thing that I like to do here that I know lots of people have seen, if you've seen Carolyn Deal at all in her wonderful double strung harp videos, I definitely will have a link to her stuff in my packet for you. She has a whole compendium, over 170 YouTube videos on techniques and, and unique things that you can do on a double, as well as a Patreon page. So I, I really want to encourage you to look her up. And one of the first things she teaches is to do something called a waterfall. And a waterfall is working in thirds. working in thirds, but now you're going to work in thirds sequentially. And when you're able to do that, what happens is that you can get quick and you don't have to feel that you're tying your fingers in knots to repeat those notes. You just let your fingers tumble down the strings. And then you can end it any way you want. There's no mistakes. So you can just keep on a keeping. And then you can go down and you can try another note. So waterfalls are a technique. I did not name that a waterfall. Carolyn Deal calls that a waterfall, but it absolutely describes for us what's happening. It sounds like water tumbling over some rocks. Then the next fun thing you can do with that same technique is that you find your first third on your right hand. So I've, right now I've got an E flat and I've got a G. There's my third. One, two, three. Now I'm going to do another third this time, I'm going to go down one course of strings. So instead of E flat and F in the middle and then my G, I'm going to go down one. So I'm going to go up 
and I'm going to alternate those. So what happens then is it sounds like water that's just tumbling instead of just going over so gently or maybe with some little bit of energy with the with the waterfall which is you get a little bit more of that tumbling kind of a sequential insert those wonderful things wherever you like. So echoes, waterfalls, cascades, all very doable. The other thing that this harp gives us is alternate tunings. And it was one of the things that Kelly Yosefian said to me on the night that the, I took my harp home. She said, you know, you're going to like the fact that you can tune this harp in complementary tunings. Now, I've never mastered that yet. <laughs> However, Lori Riley, who is obviously uh, the maven of double strung harp, she has a wonderful video about how you can have your harp tuned in C here and up here in this octave, both in C. Then you switch in these two octaves down here, your low reach and your higher reach are tuned in G two complementary tunings existing on the harp at one time. The player then remembers where they're going for anything in the key of C and where they're going in it for anything that needs a G key signature, which is the one sharp. So that type of tuning is very, very popular. It takes a little bit of time to learn. I would consider myself to be maybe an intermediate player. So that's where I'm starting to really do my work is to investigate some unique tunings. More importantly, for those of us who are, are adult learners who come to the double strung harp or any harp later in life is that you have a set of levers for a reason. These levers help us to change keys, as you know. And when we are playing within a certain key signature, we often get a something that sometimes we don't like so much and it's called an accidental. The reason why we, we kind of think it is a bit problematic is that because it means that we have to do a note that doesn't exist in the key signature and that usually means that we're going to be using the harp to sharpen a lever. So here's the thing. I can write a piece or play a piece that has an accidental that occurs and all I have to do is set that accidental in advance. I don't have to try to flip a lever while I'm playing. I can say to myself, okay, in measure 28, I need to go to an F sharp and I can flip that lever and then I can go ahead and play. There's my F natural on my right side. I'm having no trouble getting that F natural, but wait a minute, I need an F sharp. <gasps> there it is. All I did was pre-program this lever, pre-programming my levers for changes in key or accidentals. I don't have to fight with how to change a lever. Well, that's pretty sweet. It doesn't work in every instance, but it's very, very useful. I do know that there are pieces that I'm encountering now as I'm advancing a bit in my training um, where I do need to switch some levers while I'm playing. Typically, if you have a single course harp, like on just this side, you're going to sw switch your levers with your left hand you're going to switch your levers while you're playing. In a double strung, we often switch our levers on the opposite side because our right hand often gets the joy of having a lot of the accidentals. Lori Riley has a wonderful technique that I've learned about how to change a lever when you have a blind side to your harp. Believe it or not, I've got a full course of levers over here and I only can see the top ones. The rest of them are kind of, uh, they're there. I don't always say hello to them, but they're there. And I have to tell you that she has a brilliant way of doing this. Let's say I need an F sharp and I need it in my right hand and I'm playing along. I'm going to make sure that I know where my F sharp is. I'm going to follow it up the string and I'm going to flip. I don't even have to look. All I have to do is follow the string and flip. Now it's down. Now it's up. Down. Follow up. Up. Follow up. Back down. 
I'm not looking at the lever. I'm just allowing the string to do its job. The string is doing its job. Now, talking about strings, which we are now starting to discuss. You know and I know that we have... Well, what did I do? I didn't get that lever all the way down. So see, it'll correct me when I make a mistake. And I'm not going to edit that out. Because it happens. Here's the thing. Your colored strings, when it comes time to play a double strung, are your best friends. When you play a double strung for the first time, I would suggest that it would be tuned in the key of C because it will allow you to use your red strings as visual markers. And then your F will be your other visual marker. And I'll tell you the fastest way for me to adjust to this harp. When I had no teacher, no understanding of how to even come to this harp and do something that was worth it, let me say this. I have to thank Paul McCartney. <laughs> I have to thank the Beatles. If I, I just got so enamored with them that I wanted to play guitar. And I started playing guitar when I was young, 10, 11 years old. And I sat in my bedroom and I put my fingers on that fretboard till my fingers bled because I wanted to play what Paul played. <laughs> so now you fast forward and I, that was when I was nine and 10 and now I'm 66 years old. I now know where my fingers go on a guitar. I now can get to most of those chords. But do you know what that guitar training, even though it was self-taught and awkward and miserable at first has done for me as a harpist? It made me understand how this harp is laid out and how I can engage with it. If you know anything at all, if you know fretted instruments, a, a mandolin, uh, if you play a, a Appalachian dulcimer, a guitar, you have chord theory in your head whether you know it or not. Because you know that certain things have to happen in order for the chords to make sense. I happen to be tuned at E flat right now, so I know that this is my one chord. Boy, I do have this. There it is. I'm going to do my E flat. Now, what other chords can I use in this particular key? C is one, and A is one. And the chord that I need to resolve and get back to the beginning or my number one chord is going to be a B flat chord. I can do that in any key on this harp. I can tune to G and I can go G, C, D, A, E minor, and I can find those chords now on my harp. It's just the best thing, because guess what you get to do? You just get to spend time plucking and playing. The harp is so forgiving. And what did I just do? I just did a chord progression. I didn't play the full chord. I didn't arpeggiate the chord or block it. I just took the root note of that particular chord and I played it in a sequence that I learned to play in guitar work. So if any of you come to this instrument with guitar, mandolin, banjo, Appalachian dulcimer, any kind of chord, piano work, it will serve you in good stead because you know that an E flat chord is going to go there, a C chord is going to go there, an A chord is going to go. And there you are, and you're back. So, chord theory is not as scary as you want to believe. I know people think circle of fifths, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? No, 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 no. This is fun. This is enjoyable. And you just get to experiment. You experiment. If you play something, let's say I start out again with my E flat. I don't mind the F. The F sounds okay. Hmm. Do I want to go to a E? And then back to a C. The C takes me into a minor feel, and then A starts to remove me from there, and there comes my D. So, you can just move around the harp. I can retune this harp to any key, and I can do those things. 
So that's what's so magical about this. My hands are playing in the same octave. My hands are not fighting with each other. My hands are happy. And it takes about two weeks, I think, to comfortably make peace with your brain and your eyes when it comes to this harp. But let me say this. As a person who started my instrumental music career on a flute, I don't know if you've ever heard a student starting on a flute when they're nine years old, but it's not pretty. It's not at all the James Galway version of the flute. It's screeching and it's got overtones because your embouchure is a mess and it's ugly and it makes it sounds like nails on a chalkboard to the point where my poor dog <laughs> would run from the house when I got my flute out. I'd go in the bedroom and set myself up and grab my flute and my dog was gone because all he would do is, oh God, please stop playing. Please stop playing. He hated it. Same thing when I tried oboe. Then I thought, well, you know, oboe, oboe will do it. Oboe won't do it. <laughs> oboe is a double reed instrument, which, by the way, anybody uh, that plays oboe, you have and, uh, any double reed like the bassoon, you have my respect and my total gratitude because it is a very difficult instrument to master. And no matter what I did and no matter how hard I practiced, even when I was in high school, I would take my oboe and go to a competition or, you know, a band festival and it would never fail. My reed would flatten. It would just collapse and I would sound like a dying duck. And that's when you know that an instrument isn't all that forgiving in its creation and its form. I have to say to you that while the harp is a very challenging instrument, it's also probably the most beautiful instrument I've ever played. I've played hammered dulcimer, lap dulcimer, banjo, guitar, penny whistles, uh, recorders, flutes, you, I, oboe. <laughs> I have to tell you that all of those instruments sounded just horrid when I first started. And it took weeks, months, sometimes years to get to the point where I could say to you, I can play that. I can play that. But let me tell you something about this double strung harp and most harps in general. They just have a voice. They want to sing. They're available and they're just the most lovely things. You can start out. That's just basic chords. I can just pluck. Oh, there, that was an octave on each side of this. I didn't have to split my hand to do my octave like this. I can actually do my octave like this if it's easier. Which brings me to a fingering issue that goes along with all this talk about strings and the sonority of a, of a double strung harp. You can have alternate fingerings and it's the coolest thing ever because you can take fast pieces like Irish Washerwoman. I mean, you are, you're going to just go, 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 go. I can't play that fast. I wish I could play that fast, but I can't. If I separate it though and put different notes in my hand as comfortable in the right sequence, I can nail it. It's so much easier to do that than it is to try. You just can't. And you know you have to place your hand you're supposed to place, and you're supposed to get there fast. Well, you can do that so much faster when you're not having to worry about where your hands are and everything being in just one hand. You can, miss, you can appropriate notes all over. So here's the thing. I wrote a song for my um, concert portion of, of Harp Gathering, and it happens to have a fingering that goes something like this. And my harp teacher said to me, well, there's nothing magical about what you just did. That's playable on a single strung harp. And I said, it is. Absolutely, I know it is. She said, you just don't have the fingering pattern yet. You need to go and use your right hand. So it's going to be four, three, one, two, right? Well, when I do it, I split it. My, my A is up here in my right hand. It is not down here. I don't have to go. I don't have to go 
E flat G and then I can do it all by separation. I can just separate them out. And I just moved one note over to my right hand. And by doing that, I totally opened up what I could play and I could add interest to it. And I didn't have to tie my fingers in knots or get in the way of my other hand. And I didn't have to make my left hand be the heavy lifter. I, I could take my left hand out of the equation a bit and give it a little tiny bit of a rest so that my right hand could kind of take up some of the slack. So the thing is, when I wrote the song, because I wrote it on a double, I automatically went to that fingering, that, that creative fingering, the different fingering, okay? I just did. I did that. And, and my teacher said, no, 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 no. You've got to get yourself, you've got to change it. You've got to change it. Because on a single strong, that is exactly where you're going to get those notes in the right order. But I can play it quicker and faster by splitting those notes up. So, fingerings matter. All the good technique that you have, that you own, that you bring from playing a single course harp is absolutely crucial and beautiful and wonderful for this harp as well. Good harp technique is always going to be good harp technique. Make sure that you're pulling your fingers into your palms. Make sure your hands are relaxed, that your thumbs are up, that your hand is cupped a little bit like it's holding a tomato gently inside of it. Make sure that your posture and everything about playing so that ergonomically you can play this instrument for years. But the point is, you can do this. This is not a mystifying, impossible instrument. It's a very beautiful, very forgiving, and very talented instrument in its own way. It adds to the pantheon of harp. It doesn't take away from, it doesn't replace, and it doesn't challenge all those other beautiful single strong, single course harps. It adds, it gives you options, and it gives you lots of territory to explore. So I'm hoping that you will feel that you would love to explore this harp that you would like to connect with any of us who play, that you would like to connect with a builder of a double strung, that you would love to connect with anyone who can teach you the correct double strung techniques and single strung techniques because they are the same. You will learn a few fingering changes and some of those neat little things like cascades and waterfalls to include, but technique is technique is technique. And the one thing I wanna say, my cautionary tale is starting on my own, I got all the bad habits you can imagine. I mean, I'm the queen of bad harp habits and bad fingerings and bad everything. <laughs> so I, my last pitch to you as a harp player and a double strung player to boot, make sure in this day and age with all the virtual studios that are available that you can connect up. There's more teachers right now than there's ever been in harp and double strung. Many more builders of double strung than there's ever been. In 1990, there were exactly zero, and now there are at least 10 people who build and engineer these wonderful instruments. Meet with a teacher a few times, so make sure that you're ergonomically correct so you don't hurt yourself, because you can hurt your back, you can hurt your shoulder, you can hurt your hands. So you want to make sure that your technique is as good as you know how to develop it. And then take a few lessons. See how the door just flies wide open and this harp wants to play with you, wants to play for you, and wants to get along with all the other instruments. So I hope that you'll feel really interested in this harp, that you'll reach out and talk to us. Look on Facebook. We have a double strung page on Facebook, and I would love for you to check that out. So many talented, wonderful people there with a depth of resources that you won't be so glad you have. And I want to thank you for spending some time with me today. I'm so glad to have been here with you. And I hope to see you next year at Harp Gathering 2022 in Sodder Village. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.